Earl Mosley is running a dance intensive yes. uh, this week at the Ailey School. And it's going to culminate with a performance, well, really two performances on Saturday, the 5th of September, 7 p.m., and Sunday, the 6th of September, at 3 p.m. And um, this is a, I got the chance to see your work uh, recently. And what I was really pleased with and, and very impressed with is the large number of young men that you have involved mm -hmm. in your project. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's, that's something that we don't see every day. And it's an honor. It's definitely an honor. I feel like it's a blessing. Well, you're giving them something, you know. You're, they're having a chance to work with beside people like like Dudley Williams worked mm -hmm. with them for so long, mm -hmm. and then you uh, you brought in Clifton, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Clifton, Clifton Brown, Clifton Brown, yeah, and, Matthew Rushing, Darius Crenshaw, yeah, yes, yeah, so Aubrey Lynch, all these Aubrey. people who you know, and 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 uh, Fowler, who I think is yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Like How do you say her last name? Tessa Pagoras. Okay, I'm glad you said it. So, <laughs> <laughs> that like, sounds like something I have at a Greek restaurant. But, uh, <laughs> but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the program. Okay. And about why you decided to take on this project. Because uh, as I said in, the, in an earlier review, I, I kind of found it, uh, in a way, your uh, answer to um, uh, saving black men, giving them and empowering them in, mm -hmm. in such a way, giving them an opportunity mm -hmm. to express themselves. Yeah, I, I totally agree. You're right on it. Um, I come from the South, and I grew up on a dirt road. We had pigs and chickens and cows and all of that. What, what state was um, it? North Carolina, from Raleigh. Um, and my family was not an artsy family. Blue collar, workers, you know, bring it in, let's eat, make sure there's money on the table. Not the bank account, but on the table, you know? And when, and I have a family of nine, nine siblings. Seven guys, two girls. So that's a lot to take on. Yeah. And in that type of a very familiar, you know, environment. My aunt who lived next door, my grandmother lived next door to her. Right. And they, everybody had kids. And, but most of them did what they were taught, which was, Okay, my father was a farmer, his father was a farmer, my grandmother was a farmer, so the next generation pretty much they're gonna fall in suit. And then there's always that one that that, that you know that, that that one kid though that's kinda like, well, I don't know if this is actually me. <laughs> I was that kid. <laughs> and and it was it was sad but innocent. They didn't know how to react to that. Because everybody was so along that same journey, and I was always that one like, uh, well, I want to go do so and so, so and so. And they were even as a kid, you know, I think about that all the time. I, there was always that moment that came out of nowhere where my mom, my dad would be like, "Why did you ask about that? Or why are you not running out there to do what those other boys are doing so quickly?" And I didn't have an answer. I didn't. I didn't know why. It was just there. So fast forward, um, that feeling never left. And I always had this curiosity about the what ifs. Like, I know this, but, but what if? What, what's out there? And those questions led to me realizing how many opportunities that were not right in front of me. And it wasn't that anyone didn't want me to succeed or be who I am. They just didn't know how to give me those type of opportunities. I, it must be a, just a gift because I sought them out without anyone having to tell me. I just naturally sought out those opportunities, those curiosities of what else is out here beyond that dirt road that I grew up on. And that just never left me. And so when I finally decided to, be a, uh, to become a dancer, or I should say someone in this, this, this well, field. How did, you, how did you decide that? That's, that's the curiosity, because had you, you, when you grew up, I imagine you weren't, you didn't see, they were actually called no, the no, down you're the right. or something. <laughs> you, know. you are so right, Walter. Um, well, you know, I, maybe it's fate because I didn't actually decide. My friends is even in junior back then with junior high school. I guess now they call it middle school. Um, they would always say, "You're always dancing. You're always dancing." So it started street dance, yeah, popular dance, yeah, 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 yeah. Like you know, just. Yeah. But they were like, "But you always do a little bit more. You're always the last one. First one there, last one to leave." Syndrome. Why? And I, I don't know. It's just fun. I didn't. I didn't question it again. I didn't question it. But by the time I turned, I didn't start formal training until I was 18. Um, but from, let's say, age 13 through there, that, that, was, it, that was a constant denominator. People were, even my, my, my principals, my school teachers, 
people, my gym teacher, but mostly, you sure you don't want to be a dancer? And I was like, so no. Good. Yeah, I want to be an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be an accountant. I was, I had gotten accepted to North Carolina a University. I want to be an accountant. But my senior year in high school, it was just echoing in my ears so much until a friend of mine, never forget her, Maria Taylor, was like, I dare you to take this dance class because I'm telling you, you're making a mistake. I dare you to take this dance class. And I, come on, you, you took the dare. And it was, if she hadn't done that, I wouldn't have done it. She dared me to take a class, and I did. It was a, a creative, never forget the teacher's name, Miss Arnold, um, some a creative class that my school was offering. And I went in there and had a blast. It was more just like improvisational, we were, you know, I don't know, frogs hopping across the floor or something, you know, giraffes or whatever, trees. But it was a lot of fun. And so then I asked that teacher, is there more to this than what I'm doing now? And she said, I got a feeling you should go audition for this school called North Carolina School of the Arts in winston Salem, North Carolina. I took her up on it. I didn't tell my father. I didn't tell my mom. I told my cousin. My cousin who lived with us, her name was Gwen. And she's one of those ones, you know, there's always that, Hopefully, there's, there, there, there's always that one that's kind of like, I got your back, no matter what. And so if I, if I needed $10, he don't tell you that, I gave it to you. Because she knew I made, good, I, made, I made good good grades in school and stuff. She's like, you're a good kid. I'll, you know, you go to the movies, don't tell him I gave you money. You know, you, you deserve it. And so she drove me there, two and a half hours away. Drove me there, no formal training. And for some reason, they accepted me in that school. They accepted me in that school. And from then on, it was like every sense of education, meaning learning what the vocabulary is, the honing your raw talents, the level of dedication that you need, the commitment, all, all of that just kind of, for me, I don't know why, it just kind of went fast forward, like everything went fast. Um, and I never got sick of it. But that also showed me though how much was out there that I didn't know, do you see me coming back to the point? Right. What I didn't know, and I always want to make sure that these young guys know I get that. That I get feeling like you're an outsider or like what you're doing is not by the populace. What you're doing is not necessarily acceptable, but still do you. Do what you believe in because you never know where it could lead you. I don't mind in this program that you don't be a dancer for your living, but I'm hoping that it'll just uh, motivate these young men to be better. You know what I mean? Just, 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 just to be better. Through the discipline. And yeah. The commitment yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And the camaraderie. Yeah. All, all the things I saw in your concert. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's, it's, it's. You know, I think it's important to realize that you're not by yourself. You know, I think that's so, just so, so, so important to realize. And it's easy to get lost in the competitive spirit of it because usually you see a large number of men only in an audition process. Right. You know. Um, it's easy to feel like I gotta be about me. I don't have time to deal with you, especially living in a city like, as a, com a competitive city like New York City. So I wanna bring, I wanna, I wanna help these young men to remember when I went to the um, Alvin Ailey American Dance Center on 45th Street, and I would see Carl Bailey and Kevin Brown and all those men, and they would say, Mosley, what are you doing? Come over here and sit with me, we're Rogers, let's talk for a second. You know, I feel like as my career has gone on, I don't. I don't feel a lot of that happening. It could be because of technology. You know, most of everybody's texting now, emailing. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's like that sixth and seventh wall. <laughs> we, don't, we don't talk anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But back then, you know, you kind of didn't have any choice. I miss that. Yeah. And I think a lot of young men, men and women, um, if they had those type of opportunities, they would love it also. You know? Yes. It's just a tell of the times. I think they would love it also. They just don't know. So I'm, I'm, I'm praying that in this type of process of creating that community base first will give the dancers a chance to be like, oh, it doesn't matter if I have more training than him or if my leg goes higher than his or if I'm dancing, because we have dancers who are dancing in companies of being a part of this, dancers who are on Broadway being a part of this, dancers who have done all of that and that are now teaching being a part of this. And then we have like this little boy, Michael, who lives four hours away. His mom drives him here every day. 13 years old. God bless him. He's 13 years old. And he's and, and, and they're at the same place. Well, All of this sounds a lot like your upbringing. I, when I, when I, mm. I'm a New Yorker. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. uh, the subway, mm -hmm. the whole mm -hmm. thing. But I moved to South Carolina. Oh, I, really? I lived, outside of Char I lived in Charleston. And I had okay. a lot of friends okay. who lived outside of Charleston on uh -huh. the islands. Okay. And when you go out to places like Wadmalong, 
-huh. And mm -hmm. there's uh, Mr. Frazier. Right. Mr. Frazier's sons lives here. Mr. Right. Mr. Frazier's right. daughter lives here. Right. This, he had 12 kids. Right, right. Yes. And then, yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah. And then, then my friend was his grandson. Right. And he used to hate because his grandmother used to make him sit on the bucket when they cut <laughs> the yard chicken's head off. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I know exactly what you mean. But yeah. see, what you're talking about is reestablishing a family. When, mm -hmm. I, when I speak to people like Loretta mm -hmm. Abbott and Dudley yes. and Claude, yes. they, they talked about not the, a company, they talked about a family. family. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're, you're, you're so right. And I think at the end of the day, we all, we all need family. You know, it's, it's nice to get the, you know, the accolades and the successes and all of that. But, it, but why do people really love you, you know?